the southeast of the Asian continent, tucked in the Himalayas, is one of the world's most enigmatic countries, Bhutan. The land with a unique concept called Gross National Happiness. Here, everyone is quick to smile and laughter. It's a place where wealth is not the guarantee to happiness, where wisdom is developed with compassion, where consciousness continues after death. The place that has in the true sense achieved a collective nirvana. In Bhutan, whatever culture we have, uh, religion plays a very important role uh, uh, because uh, our recorded uh, history of our culture uh, begins with the religion. Considered to be one of the Sarma or new schools of Tibetan Buddhism, the Drukpa lineage traces the origin of its transmission to Vajradhara, the manifestation of the supreme essence of Buddhahood. Today, when a Bhutanese Buddhist performs his daily morning prayer, he starts it by thanking all the lineage masters who have passed on the faith to him in his purest and most ascetic manner. And one of the first few he pays remembrance to are Tilopa and Naropa, the two great saints who belong to the neighboring country of India. Naropa was the disciple of Tilopa who received the complete Mahamudra teachings from Tilopa. The Tibetan master Marpa was appointed by Naropa as his successor in Tibet. Naropa prophesied that his lineage would prosper considerably in the land of snow. Shabdron really unified Bhutan as one kingdom as it is today when he came down here in 1616. Before that, actually, Rupa Kajupa tradition came to Bhutan much earlier, a few hundred years earlier. He just reintroduced and expanded Rupa Kajupa school. It was during Shabdrung's time that a friendship of an unusual kind started to develop between the valley of Bhutan and the desert of Ladakh. But the souls of these places couldn't have been more alike. Very much like Bhutan, Ladakh is a land ruled by forces of goodness, a place of peace, non-violence and spirituality, where the ravages of time and history have been held back. The two lands were yet unconnected by road, but spiritually, they shared the strongest connection that traced back many ages. And the common link binding them was Naropa and an inherent faith in his teachings. Sthagna or the Tiger's Nose Monastery, established by Choje Mugzin, became the main seat of the southern Drukpa Kajiu tradition in Ladakh. Even as Choje Mugzin is the first recorded representative from Bhutan here, the golden period of cross-pollination actually happened when the successive king Nima Namgyal expressed a fresh interest in inviting Bhutanese scholars to Ladakh in 1705. It was only apt that masters from Bhutan brought the Kajupa teachings back to where they originally belonged. It was almost like a reverse dissemination. Bhutanese scholars further helped Ladakh revitalize and rediscover many details from this age-old religious tradition. From here on, the Drukpa Kaju order began to flourish independently in Ladakh, adopting a life and soul of its own. However, Bhutan continued to remain a source of inspiration for those who wish to conserve their exceptional religious heritage. I think there has been exchanges, which was both ways. Of course, Ladakh is came, and then also uh, uh, many Bhutanese went and saw how uh, Buddhism was practiced there and uh, how um, the uh, Ladakhi culture was evolving and developing and getting preserved. It is this cultural treasure shared by the two regions that seems to contain all the wisdom of the human race. It is not for no reason that Ladakh is one of the few lands that assures personal liberation and Bhutan, 
one of the only lands that holds the promise of an earthly paradise.